right. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this Saturday? Hopefully you have nice weekend plans, either at home or in your community. There we go. I was just doing a refresher, making sure everything shows up for you guys nicely. All right. So this is Paint with Lovejoy. This is our daily demo. And we're painting a essence of Napa Valley, a the rolling hills up there. And we're gonna be using both a brush and, there we go, looking for the chat, and a knife today. And I like the knife just for some of the texture that we'll be doing. All right, so a little bit of what you're looking at on the screen is we've got our color choices for today. Like I said, we'll use a little bit of the knife work to scrape those on there. And I'm on an eight by 10 panel. So it's a little flatter than the stretched canvases. Um, and we already have our line drawing on here. So you've got two options. Uh, you can pause the video, draw what you see on your canvas and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or um, there's a link in the description box below. You can uh, purchase the traceable uh, from my website. You download it, print it out. And then with carbon paper, you uh, transfer your image to your canvas. And for my first time painters, the traceable is a nice approach. Um, so that way you don't have to stress about drawing and you can jump right into painting. So whichever option you go for, um, just kind of get your initial composition on there and have fun with the painting process. So since we're doing some rolling hills um, and we've got a little hint of, you know, that we've got the, the, um, the rows of the, the grapes for the vineyard, but we're gonna kind of lay our colors first that I need to dry. So we're gonna kind of fill here with our dirt colors between our raw sienna and burnt sienna. And then we'll start getting these in and then we'll do a light blue sky. And then I'll probably move to the brush and start putting thicker paint on top of here. We've got some rows going this direction, um, kind of a little bit of a row here and then some skinny ones. So it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun today. All right, so like I said, we're gonna start with this first area. And I'm actually going to do a mixture of this is raw sienna and burnt sienna and just kind of a one to one ratio. Now for the way that I apply the paint with the palette knife, it's a bit more of a scraping method. So I'm using a smaller knife just because I'm on a smaller canvas, but there are multiple shape knives. And if you don't want to use a knife, you can use a brush to fill this in um, and just use your brush like normal. And if you do want uh, to use a palette knife method, but you don't have a palette knife, you can use an old credit card or an old gift card um, or really anything with kind of a solid um, plastic kind of edge. Even a paint scraper would work. But anything that you can just use the edge and just scrape your paint on here. So it doesn't have to be the exact tool that I'm using. And if you have to mix your color two or three times, totally okay. Little variety is nice. And so this first line here, or second line from the bottom, we're gonna be filling in with these uh, gray, uh, shades of brown. And I am just gonna go right over this line. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit lighter below that line. And the scraping method's really nice and therapeutic. Like I said, it's more my style of palette knife painting. But if you have any frustrations, any anxiety from you know life and things that happen, um, this is a excellent method to just kind of scrape away some emotions, some frustration. Um, so give this a try. And if you end up liking this style, check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy. And there is an intro to my style knife painting. And there's four options in there that you can paint. So definitely check it out and just keep your creativity going. All right, so just filling in that space. My particular palette knife style, I would scrape on layers like this and let it dry and then scrape on more layers. So my paintings for my professional work have almost a hundred layers of paint scraped on top of it. And if you wanna see any of those um, in the description box below, there's a link to my portfolio. So you can see that by scraping layers on, you can, you can get some really cool effects. And like I said, it's just very, very stress relieving. All right, so let's see. Oh, hi, Denise. Hi, Annette. Thanks for jumping on. Awesome. Cool. And like I said earlier, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll just kind of get into the groove of painting today. 
All right, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit because when I, if I put a color on top of it, it's gonna mix with it. So we'll come back and add a little bit more. And now we're gonna move back into these hills and go a little bit darker. So I'm actually gonna grab the burnt sienna by itself, that reddish brown. And let's see, we're gonna scrape it just on this hill. And we are going kind of dark, kind of earthy uh, with these browns first. And then with kind of thicker paint and the brush, um, we're gonna come back in with our shades of green and yellow green uh, to place right on top of here, giving a nice contrast. And we'll apply that a little bit thicker with the brush. Um, and I might actually show you an option with the palette knife too. I think I did that in one of the demos um, at the beginning of doing the daily demos a couple months ago. All right, then here I wanna go just a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take some of the black and the burnt sienna. There we go. And again, I'm just trying to get three different shades on here. It will look a little bit different once we put the other kind of colors on top of it that make it pop. And then we'll get into some kind of uh, just the raw sienna, a little bit lighter for these back here. So if you end up getting into landscape painting or even plein air painting, it is pretty amazing how the different colors look to create the uh, illusion of distance, how much detail you have a little bit more further up compared to further in the horizon line. And the more that you paint in this style or just paint the subject matter, the more you'll start recognizing that um, when you're driving around or even looking at other photographs. Okay, so let's see, let's go up into these two hills. We're gonna go with kind of a light, uh, light uh, raw sienna and then a little bit lighter right here. So we're gonna pull some of the raw sienna and that's the lighter of the browns. Mix a little bit of white with it. And as you're doing this at home, whether you're using the knife or the brush, if you need to turn your canvas sideways to make it a little bit easier, um, especially if you're using the knife, feel free to do that. I'm gonna keep my painting in the same direction, same orientation, just because I'm filming the video. All right, and then we're gonna add a little bit more white, go a little bit lighter right there. And there we go. And even try that. Sometimes just even throw the colors kind of chunky on your canvas and then use your knife to just kind of scrape it uh, across and even mix it directly on your canvas. In the world of art, you know, there really isn't any wrong way to create. Um, I tell my students the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So if you are inclined to kind of experiment and try something, give it a try because that's how you're going to figure out what you like and don't like for your own creative style. All right, oh, let me carry a little bit of that back over to here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the foreground up here and I do wanna lighten it up because um, again, for the foreground, we have more detail up close and that helps with our illusion of depth um, compared to it's a little bit hazier in the background. So kind of just making kind of this bottom half a little bit lighter. So just kind of slapping that yellow into it. My brown underneath is already, is still wet. So you can see that as I scrape this yellow on here, it is changing colors a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to give an illusion that this is a little bit lighter compared to uh, right here, but it'll look different once we get these uh, the vines on there. All right, and we're gonna put that yellow in one other place, but I want you to wipe off that excess paint really good. And as the photograph that I'm referencing, there's kind of a nice light source coming into the hills right here. And here you can add you know, a little bit more control if you are using the knife, if you're using the brush, move down to maybe your pointy brush. And we're just given a uh, indication with this yellow of where the light, where the sun's actually hitting this area. And again, my paint is still wet from that first layer, so it is changing colors a little bit and mixing in. All right, so now wipe that brush, or wipe the knife off. <laughs> uh, we're gonna move into the sky and we're gonna start with just a light blue 
And again, you get an option. You can do it with the knife or you can go ahead and move over to the brush. I'm gonna keep with the knife just to kind of have nice texture for the whole background. Um, and then we'll move into uh, the brush. And again, I wanna keep this pretty light blue so I don't need a whole lot of blue pigment. There we go. And again, you can adjust in, uh, to the shade that you want. And if you prefer sunset colors or a purple sky, uh, whatever you feel like creating. Whoops, got a little bit of purple in there as I was talking about it. And we will just call that a happy accident. Apparently my canvas wanted a little bit of purple in there. So if that happens to you, don't fight it, just embrace it. It's never the end of the world. In fact, it may become a point that you like in your painting and that's why we call them happy accidents. And if you have to mix your color a second time and it's a little bit different, that's okay. Don't stress about it. I'm proud of you for painting at home. It takes a lot of courage to make that jump and just dive right in. Um, but I'm sure everybody that's watching that has um, been painting for a few paintings or even painting just for their second or third or a lot would tell you that, yeah, it was pretty scary to begin with. Um, but they're really grateful that they jumped in and are and brought painting into their lifestyle. So just do it. All right, and again, just filling in this area. If you are painting on a stretched canvas, um, I generally recommend uh, carrying any of your colors that touch the edge around the side. That way it just looks really nice when you hang it on the wall, having the color um, and the image wrap around the sides of the canvas. All right, so we've got to what we call our underpainting. We've got just about all the canvas space filled in. And as you're looking at your sky, if you realize that maybe you want an area a little bit lighter, grab some of that white. You literally can scrape it right on top of there. You can even cover up an area that you might not like but kind of play with it if you want a little bit darker. A little bit of pigment goes a long way. And you can do the same effect with the brush. This is called wet on wet blending. And I'm just doing it here with a knife. You can do the same thing with a brush. And just made another happy accident. Kind of work it into it. All right, so I'm just gonna scrape some of that blue off. Not the end of the world. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so I'm gonna put the knife down. We're gonna move into the brush. All right, let's see. So we're gonna start kind of in the background and work our way forward. And I'm gonna be applying my paint pretty thick because my paint is still wet and still kind of um, kind of thick in a few areas. So at home, I would recommend, you know, just maybe do something for 10 minutes, let this dry. Uh, this part up here up front is already dry, um, but just give it a few minutes so that way you, your paint won't mix as you are applying the new color on top of it. But like I said, we're gonna be working on the hills. We're gonna get a little hints of some grass here, some really light yellow green, and then we've got a little bit coming here. When we get into these two hills, we're going to start getting more into the rows um, to indicate, you know, the vineyard, and then we'll get a little bit more detail up front. So using that middle flat brush, I'm going to start with the yellow, and this is a pretty bright spring green. So I'm going to keep that pretty yellow and add just a touch of green, just kind of toning down some of that yellow. We've actually made this color quite often um, in some of the demos. I think our tree frog, our little Yoda, I feel like one other thing, definitely for some tree areas. All right, so again, I'm gonna apply this pretty thick. Um, I am using student grade paint, so it is on the transparent side, and I'll probably have to mix more of that. And as you're following along at home, all I want you to do is just kind of observe the general area that I place each color the general shape that I make with it and mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas at home. And again, it does not have to match mine entirely. 
uh, you're just using this video as a reference point for what you are creating. And because my paint is wet and I'm applying it a little bit thicker, I'm kind of holding my brush at that 45 degree angle. So I'm not using the tips of my bristles, but I'm using the side of the bristles to just kind of place um, this thicker paint on there. And if your brush strokes are showing up, it's usually coming from the tips of the bristles because that's kind of cutting uh, closer to the canvas as you are applying your paint. And as you're a beginner painter, first time painter, uh, your muscles are learning a lot. So be kind to yourself. You will get more comfortable with holding the brush, with applying the paint. Um, you'll get more comfortable with each painting. So don't expect to be perfect right out the gate. It takes a little bit of practice for anything in life. All right, so I just made kind of a few indications. We've got a little bit of rose to where you can see the green and then um, kind of the, the light tan color. And here, this hill is a just a bit more sporadic with the green. There's not really an organization, so I, I don't think it is part of the vineyard, but it is just kind of scattered with some green. And as you're doing this, and it, this one's a bit more the scattered, if there's an area that you don't quite like, or maybe where the blue overlapped um, in there, just make sure some of this color goes on top of it and you cover it up. And aside from anybody watching the video, they're never gonna know that I had blue in that area. So art is not about being perfect, but just kind of working with what you have in front of you, your own circumstances, your own materials, your own variables. All right, so pretty good. Oh, let me get this little corner over here. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't think the plate's blocking it. All right, so now I'm actually gonna be moving into the smaller brush. I'm gonna, I'll show you both ways with this brush and the smaller, and we're gonna start working with um, hills going this direction, and then we've got some really skinny um, lines, lines here, and then lines on this direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all that excess paint off of my brush. And we're going to be going in with some darker shades of green for this. So probably easier to start out with the whiter brush strokes because these are going to be pretty skinny. So we'll be using the pointy brush for that and light pressure. So for this one, again, I'm going to be applying it kind of thick and I'm going to grab that green just by itself because it is pretty dark and kind of starting at the top of the hill. We're going to keep, you know, fairly parallel lines and there's a slight curve to it. And this just gives a visual indication um, that there's movement and this is kind of the direction of the curve of the hill. So again, applying it pretty thick and then giving a little bit of space and just kind of again, mimicking that same shape. The repetition of this curve is what gives that nice illusion that we've got these, these um, collective hills and rows for agriculture, for wine, for drinking. <laughs> and I do recommend if you uh, are of legal age to partake and have some wine, some Napa Valley wine or your favorite wine while you paint a uh, painting indicative of wine country. It is how all those paint and sip things got pretty popular. All right, and as you get into these smaller areas, feel free if you need to jump down to the pointy brush, go right ahead and do that. I still have the tendency to just stick with one brush and use it in different angles or manners. All right, so as we get into this hill, these lines are gonna be um, kind of going this direction and they're gonna be a lot skinnier. So I will move down to this. And for this one, we're gonna make them just a little bit um, lighter. So that way it stands out a bit more contrast on that darker background. So we're not going as light as this. So I'm actually gonna start with the green first and then add a little bit of yellow to it just to tone it down, but I still want it pretty dark. And, and we'll, we'll do a test in just a minute, but it may look one color here. And then when we go to apply it, it may not be enough. So you may have to adjust the color and I'm actually gonna make it a little bit lighter so it stands out more. And then here I am just kind of using that same kind of 45 degree angle, light pressure. I like the lighter a little better. So 
if this is too small of an area for you, if it's a little frustrating in, in the beginning stages, it can be, um, grab a toothpick or a paper clip and unfold the paper clip and you can use that to kind of apply these smaller lines. That's a good one right here too. And in art, like I said, nothing has to be perfect. Um, and you'll also notice that when you do a painting and then you go to paint your next painting, what you learned from the painting prior will make so much more sense. So as you go through the creative process, it's, it's kind of a compounding experience that you learn the more that you do, the more that you practice. So once you kind of dive in and you find a joy for it, most people are there for quite a while. All right, so we're going to do one more shade, one more shadow over here before we start getting into the big area um, of our vineyards. I'm going to take that purple, that direct purple by itself, and we're going to go right on top of the direct green that we put here, except we're going to go on the right-hand side. So placing it right on top of and going kind of thick. I'm going to step up or stand up in just a moment and see should be able to see it on the screen. Not too bad. Let's see if that helps. Okay. So again, just going right on top of the green on the right hand side. This is just giving one more shadow value and it doesn't have to be the full length. You can kind of see it's a little bit choppy in a few areas, but again, it's just giving that illusion that we have a 3d area on this flat 2d surface. And at home, if you feel like switching up colors, if you want to do an orange base and then these colors on top or do bright, bold, crazy colors, go right ahead. And no matter what you paint, um, email me photos of what you paint. Send them to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I've been enjoying making collage photos of all the student pictures and then posting them on social media. And that encourages so many people to try painting. So you guys are hugely important in the process of spreading this channel to other people and just encouraging other people to paint more. Okay, so now we're going to be moving into here and I'll show an option with the knife and with the brush, but we're going to um, have these larger clusters of our vines and it's going to be pretty green and then we'll come in and put some stakes that the vines are attached to and then a few darker foliage areas on our hills and that will kind of bring us into the conclusion of today's painting. So we're going to kind of start again with that medium green. We're going to lay these big kind of chunky abstract blobs and then we'll put a highlight on top of that, a shadow, and then our stake post. So very similar to this color. I'm going to go just uh, maybe a little bit darker. Yeah. All right, and we will be overlapping a few of the areas here. So I'm going to start on the right, left-hand side and work my way towards the right. And like I said, I will be applying this pretty thick and likely I'll have to um, mix the color multiple times. So kind of starting here, almost where these three hills kind of intersect, I'm going to start with a big blob and then we're going to be pulling it towards the left as we do these rows. And again, just mimic the shape that you see, general area. All right, and then for our next row, kind of starting here, we will overlap that first row just a little bit. And there is a little bit of a curve that we have come in here. We'll keep it kind of coming as we bring in our other rows. All right, so again, coming here, working our way towards the right, and then we'll be bringing it back. And 
And again, take out any frustrations. You're painting blobs right now. And as you step away from your canvas and view it from about five to 10 feet away, these blobs kind of take shape and the hills take shape and you've got a sense of depth on there without painting every single detail. So that's the beauty of art, just kind of giving the impression, the illusion of space. do kind of collide over here. All right, so now we're going to start taking these blobs and giving them a little bit of structure. So I'm actually just going to grab the other brush, but still using that medium flat brush. This one's a little bit cleaner now. We're going to start with yellow and on the tops of each of these rows, we're going to put our yellow and then I believe on the bottom, we're going to do our green and purple. So I'm likely gonna have to throw more yellow on there. So this is gonna be also like the wet on wet blending. So the, as we apply our yellow, it's gonna diffuse and mix with the color underneath. Um, so we will be applying our yellow pretty generous. Kind of starting back. There we go. So I'm kind of slapping it on there and then just maybe two or three cross hatching uh, marks and then that's it because again you can see how quickly that diffused here and I need that to be a little bit brighter so let me grab some more of my yellow paint all right so same thing grab that pretty thick slap it on there and then again light pressure we're just kind of diffusing it and trying to keep towards the top because we're going to do the purple green combo on the bottom on the opposite side. So as you're painting, um, if you can look at an object and determine three values, the lightest, uh, which is called your highlight, and that's the yellow we're doing right now, your midtone, which is your main color, and that was the first layer of the green and yellow mixture that we applied, and then your shadow value, which will be the purple mixture that we're going to apply next. So having three shades, three values, is how you kind of create that depth. And that is kind of across the board for the art world, for anything kind of creative that you might do. So start trying to observe that in your daily life and that will strengthen your uh, creative world even more. Okay, so that's not bad. That works pretty well. Let me look in the phone real quick. Yep, we got some depth. All right, so now I'm gonna clean that brush. We're gonna do the same thing opposite. I'm gonna use some of that purple and apply it. It is gonna mix with the green and I'm gonna start with the purple directly by itself. And if it's too dark, then I'm gonna mix it with the green. Nope, that works, all right. So same thing with the yellow. The more you move your brush, the more it kind of blends together. And this is going on the bottom and you don't have to fully go over the green because you want some of that to shine through. And again, as you do this, look at it from a distance, see if your shadows are dark enough, if your highlights are light enough, and you are conversing with the canvas. So keep it up. Don't fight the canvas too much. It generally wins, but that's really what painting is, is you're conversing between the canvas and yourself. So we're going to clean that brush. We're going to go to the burnt sienna and we're going to get these poles in here and we're going to kind of start a little bit above and shoot up and then we'll start a little below. And I am going to stick with this middle flat brush and I'm going to hold my brush pretty perpendicular um, and just pull, apply the paint kind of thick and pull straight down because these are pretty and they're not completely straight. So if they're at a little bit of an angle, totally okay. So let's start here at the end of this one. And if you get a little bit of the green into it, that's okay. And if you're realizing that that's not dark enough, you can actually take your uh, burnt sienna, mix a little bit of black with it, because we do want to make sure that we have that contrast and then go back and just kind of reapply. So adjust the color, the shade of your pole based on how light or dark your, um, your base color was applied. And this one is a little bit above. 
And as you're working with this, the pressure of your brush makes a difference on the thickness of your line. So lighter pressure is going to be a little skinnier line, more pressure is going to be a wider line. And if you have varying lines in there, that's okay. We are just going to call that style for your painting today. All right, and this one overlaps a little bit. I'm not quite sure if it'll be super obvious. There we go. Low. And we've got a few more above here. Let's see, let's start. aren't going to be super obvious over here because we do have such a darker background. Another one below. We've got a few here that overlap. All right, now I'm going to grab that small pointy brush. We have a few kind of horizontal lines or wires that connect it. So I'm using the black paint and these are going to kind of follow the rows, you know, because they're connecting um, each of these poles that's holding up the vines. So again, just kind of keeping that light pressure. If the width of your line varies a little bit, that's okay. Just kind of go with it to where you're painting for today. And you're doing a great job. And if you even want to add a bit more of an intense shadow onto each of your poles, again, we have the light coming from the left-hand side. So on the right-hand side, you can add some of that black to the poles. And then on the left-hand side, you could add a highlight of the lighter tan or of white. So again, going back to that value scale of three shades, we're putting our shadow in right now with the black lines on the right-hand side of the poles. And it doesn't have to be every single pole. And then if you want to, completely optional. Let's do it actually with the, uh, let's do a light yellow. So I'm gonna do a yellow and white mixture. Wipe off that excess paint, there you go. And then again, right hand side, and because the, or left hand side, sorry. And because the paint is still wet, it's changing colors just a little bit. All right, and then we have a few blobs of trees to put on the hills, and we'll go back to kind of the thick paint for that. And that kind of brings us into the conclusion of today's Napa Hill painting. All right, and I actually just now remembered to look over. Thanks that there weren't too many questions. <laughs> I kind of got in zoned out into this painting. All right, so this one, we're actually going pretty dark with some of these um, clumps of trees that are out on the hillside. So I'm going to take some of that uh, green and purple. I'm going to mix it together. You can do green and black or even green and blue if you want. But we're just basically going darker than the green we were using. And again, these just kind of get to be blobs, pointy brush, or your middle flat brush. And these are just a few of the clusters of trees that are on that hillside. So we've got a few hanging out over here. And again, they're just blobs. Our brain's gonna fill in the details that they're clusters of trees. And again, very kind of impressionistic style with how we're applying the paint. So have fun with it. Sometimes it's nice not to have to paint every single detail. All right, and if you wanna add anything, if you wanna put a little house on the hill or birds flying in the sky or a sun somewhere in there, please make it your own, switch and adjust. 
these little 30 minute demos are just basically a base for you to uh, take it in your own direction. So I think that brings us to the conclusion of today's painting. So thank you guys so much for checking this out. Uh, make sure you email me any photos of what you paint. Check out the online school, Paint with Lovejoy. Check out the other videos. Share this with your community and friends. And uh, check back for tomorrow's demo. I believe it's... I'm actually not sure what we're painting tomorrow. I can't... I don't have the list up here. Yeah. So it's going to be fun, <laughs> no matter what we paint. Um, I do have the list of suggestions. Uh, we're actually about three weeks out now. Um, I'm collecting images for all the new ones that aren't on the list uh, on uh, YouTube right now. But yeah, we'll just keep moving forward. So I hope you guys have a great Saturday and I will see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.